Okay. So now we'd like to talk about a very controversial exercise that is the, the row, rowing. So um, we have our own idea about the way you have to do it for the most uh, efficient uh, results. But we used to see some different approaches on that. And uh, we'd like to know your opinion about um, the way people should do the, the row. For example, um, we see people doing it uh, inclined or 45 degrees. Uh, and we see a lot of people actually pulling a lot of weight on the rowing. And we see a lot of cheating on the rowing. So we would like to know what do you think about cheating on the row and what do you think about pulling heavy on the row and what do you think about the 45 degrees inclined row? So your word. Great. So the 45 degree incline or basically being like this on a row instead of like that, it's a fine exercise. The question is, what is it you're targeting with that exercise? If it's your upper, upper back, your mid traps, your rhomboids, your upper traps, it's a fine exercise. Uh, there are machines that do that very well also, but if you wanna do barbell rows like that, great. Just don't say it's for your mid back or your lats because they're not as heavily involved as they are if you bend over further. Mostly the reason people do 45 degree rows is because they wanna use more weight. And since you're better leveraged, you can use more weight. You can pat yourself on the back and say, I'm so strong. And the girl at the other end of the gym sees you and she instantly, you know, good things happen. <laughs> She's like, I'm just going to fuck the strongest guy in here. Whoever bent rows 180 kilos first, I'm just going to have sex with. So that's how it works in the gym, right? We've all been. We there. know that. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, damn it, stupid lockdowns. I'm training at home. I could be getting blowjobs for bent rows at a regular gym. <laughs> so, so mostly people just justify that row. Some people use it intelligently. It's possible. But a lot of people just think they're bent over rowing and really just aren't. As far as cheating, we could say cheating is stupid. You're a pussy. That's all true. But we could just be a little calmer about it and ask, okay, what's the potential benefit of cheating? It's really difficult to get to nail people down when they cheat. Is why are you doing that? It's all, of all, all kinds of rationalizations. It's more eccentric loading. You can use more weight. And it's okay, eccentric loading, that sounds cool. But if you didn't cheat and you just did more reps, wouldn't that also get you more eccentric loading? You're like, okay, yeah. And they say, okay, but I can use more, <laughs> right? I can use more weight. And they say, okay, you know, what do you mean use more weight? because we're doing the bent row for hypertrophy, we don't use weight, we use our muscles to lift the weight. So which muscles are you using to lift more weight if you're cheating? And if they're intelligently answering, say, okay, hamstrings, glutes, hamstrings and glutes, because that's what that, yeah. And then they're like, okay, are you trying to train them in this exercise? No, okay. So why are they, do, is this a sufficient stimulus to grow them? They're like, no, it's probably like junk volume for glutes and hamstrings. Just makes them more tired for when you're trying to do stiff-legged deadlifts and good mornings. Like, okay. So again, what is the point of cheating? And at the end of the day, all the BS excuses, there's a common theme here, if you guys can't tell. There's just people justifying two things. One, they want to lift more weight because it looks cool. It makes them feel good. I get it. Fine. Two, is bending over really far hurts. It fucking hurts your hamstrings. It's uncomfortable. It hurts your soul. And in addition to that, you're not lifting a whole lot of weight. You look pathetic. It feels terrible. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, you just don't want to be down there at all, right? So if you take the ego hit of bending over nice and far, when you take weight off the bar, you're going to find that a properly controlled bent row doesn't cause a lot of systemic fatigue like a super heavy cheat row does, but it fucks up your back really, really well. It's like exactly what you want, except you just have to admit that you don't really row 150 kilos. Maybe you only row 75 kilos. But if you're in there to row 150 kilos, fuck it, fine, go. But don't pretend that it's a good idea 
for back hypertrophy because it's not. And even if some big guys do it, maybe they're wrong. You know, people say, well, the IFB pros do it. Have you ever talked to an IFB pro? Some of them are awesome, really good guys. Some of them are the fucking stupidest people you'll ever meet. They have no idea why they're doing anything, right? And, and, and then you, you're here copying them. They're just copying somebody else. So, and they're egotistical as fuck, you know? It's really just, if you want something, if you want to train your back, weird idea, use your back, not your legs, not your hips. And then you'll have the best of all worlds if you can take the ego hit. If you can't, you know, that sucks. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> We are totally agree. Uh, just another uh, controversial exercise, the good morning. <laughs> uh, in Italy, we hear from some uh, powerlifting coaches that it should be trained uh, essentially as an overload exercise. Therefore, considering a real tested uh, 1RM of good morning. To be precise, they talk in terms of uh, 1RM of good morning about uh, 85-90% of the 1RM of squat. What, what do you think, especially in, in terms of the SFR of the exercises from a powerlifting perspective? Yeah, so it's curious to train a good morning that heavy because you don't compete in heavy good mornings. If you want basic posterior chain strength, sets of three to six in the good morning are probably better stimulus to fatigue ratio. So maximum good mornings probably don't accomplish as much as just high quality heavy work with good mornings in sets of three to six. And if you're using good mornings as a hypertrophy exercise for the hamstrings, Then it sets a five to 10 for power lifters. But, you know, again, that's humbling. I honestly think the reason sometimes people do really heavy assistance work is because it's fun, it's egotistical, and, and they hate reps. You know, every other meme about power lifters is like five reps, that's cardio. You know, it's a joke to us, but some people really believe that. And when they do, you know, they don't want to do five reps of good mornings, that sucks. They would much rather do one rep, pat themselves on the back, good job, and then be on their way. And I think that maybe in some context, very heavy good mornings have a place, but generally speaking, sets of three to six or five to 10, if your goal is strength or hypertrophy, is probably the better way to go. Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I totally agree. So um, I think is uh, two questions for the end. And uh, I would like to ask you this. It's very common in Italy, and I think all over the world, to give to your own athlete um, some programs that basically are um, common to everybody. I mean, I can give you a scheme, a protocol that I can give to a lot of people, just the same. Regardless about the armor V, the me V, uh, v uh, so I, it's, it's like, you know, if we create a template and we call the software barbell deadlift routine, or we can take a program like the software barbell Corte version, for example. So we would like from, to know your point of view about that. I mean, I think that a lot of politers Uh, did great stuff doing uh, pre-done protocols, but actually things that work for great powerlifting, I think that won't work for average powerlifters. So what's your point of view on that? On copy so, and paste program. <laughs> basically. Do, if you have a lot of clients, copy and paste, because you can save time. And, and then rip off your clients, get more clients, make even more money, and then you can retire in Italy. Uh, no, you retire in France, the French Riviera, of course. Yeah. The French, they know how to live. So do, is there a, Italians and French, do you like each other or not? No, not really? I think this is just the opposite way. They hate yeah. each other. Wow. <laughs> Did you guys know that every country around France doesn't like England? No, yeah. Germany doesn't like, <laughs> the French hate everybody. Yeah. That's really trippy. <laughs> So, okay, templates. 
there's a good and a bad way to use them. And it depends on what, how they are designed and how they are implemented. If you get a basic program template and it has instructions as to how to change its parameters, more sets if you're not uh, stimulated enough, fewer if you're too tired, more frequency if you uh, can handle it, less if you can't, picking your specific assistance exercises for your needs versus just exact exercises. If a template like that can be auto-regulated, it can be an excellent tool to get someone some structure or to get them started. Because a lot of people, you know, they're just training on their own and they make up some ridiculous scheme or they find some weird program online and they're just like, like a boat in heavy seas, really crazy waves and they have no idea what's going on. A template well-designed can be useful for just, just do this and they do it and they have good results. But if they want to become very good, they have to learn how their body reacts to various parts of the template and then eventually make their own training changing from what they didn't like in the template didn't work slowly towards their own custom training that works best for them. That's it. That's the best way to use a template to give you some basic structure to learn how your body works, always paying attention, customizing the template, and eventually you leave the template altogether and just do your own thing. The terrible way to use the template is not so much a template, but like, here's what the world powerlifting champion trains like. You're like, okay, all you do is reduce your percent maxes and you just start the program. Well, they have their own individual needs. In addition to that, they're an advanced training level. They have different needs than a beginner, than an intermediate. They may recover faster. They may not recover fast enough. I remember back in the day, a lot of women were training squats one time a week because they got the program from enormous 140 kilo lifters that could only squat heavy once a week because it took them the rest of the week to recover. Women who are starting training can squat every single day at least three times a week and get crazy results. And these women were getting ripped off because the results were like, okay. And then they started training more frequently and it got better. At the end of the day, the worst template is just a copy of what someone does. Funny enough, on my Instagram, I post videos of my own training. And I've had one guy, this was really ridiculous, happened recently. He's like, Mike, I, I know this might be asking a lot, but can you give us your entire program that you do with all the sets, reps, and weight? I just want to do your program. And I was like, no, I thought he was joking. So I was like, ha, ha, ha. And he's like, I'm serious. And everyone, <laughs> I didn't even say anything because 50 other people were like, are you nuts? <laughs> that it's nuts because like I do all kinds of weird stuff. I have an injury history. I have specific parts of my body I want to work on. Certain exercises have a great stimulus to fatigue ratio for me, but bad for everyone else. And it's crazy to try to copy someone. So templates are best used as, as guiding sort of central organizations for people that just don't have a ton of experience. But for other folks, you need to get your own custom training. One weird thing I have noticed is some people have been training themselves for 10 years and they'll message me and say, hey, what do you think of this like this like one German program? Should I try it? I'm like, don't you know your body well enough now that if you looked at it, you'd be like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's stupid. How can you just do another program? It's all custom at that point nuts so we have to make sure that the the template is best for us and when it's not go off on our own okay so so a, a program must be uh, how can i say open source uh, yes in order customizable. to okay. <laughs> yeah. customizable yeah open source is a great so, way to say it <laughs> uh, now the last question uh, uh This question is not uh, a flame <laughs> like other questions. Just this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. just one. Uh, the, um, the question is about the squat, but that could uh, actually be about, about any exercises. The squat, I think, is the most representative case of this problem. You and the, the uh, Renaissance Periodization Group uh, crew <laughs> in general uh, are so famous for the full ROM issue. I think uh, about your squat, uh, but also the, 
uh, squad of uh, Charlie or Jared, Jared. Uh, um, we, we, we know well how the range of motion is a factor that uh, directly influences the hypertrophy. Here, my question is, are there any cases uh, in which uh, uh, it is better to remove some uh, centimeters of uh, uh, range of motion in favor of uh, better safeness for squat, but also for, I, I don't know, I'm inclined bench, uh, barber bench, for example. Yeah, a plenty, uh, entire categories actually. So one is you're su not sufficiently flexible to maintain safe and effective posture. If going all the way down in the squat, your lower back does this, don't go all the way down. Go until your lower back starts to round and then come back up. Slowly over time, you'll be able to go deeper, but some people will never be able to squat all the way down and that's okay. An injury history and history of pain in that area, you should also be careful. Another one is if you're, if you're training to compete in powerlifting and you just have to squat below parallel, don't squat all the way down. In your assistance work and hypertrophy work, totally squat all the way down. But in your competition squatting, just squat just below parallel. You don't, they don't give you any more bonus points in competition for squatting super deep. As a matter of fact, you won't be able to lift as much. So if the competitive demands are different, if you have an injury history, which precludes you from doing so, or if your flexibility eventually will get you injured, then that's definitely uh, an issue. Another one real quick is if, well, let's at squats, this is unusual, but sometimes happens with presses and rows, your stimulus to fatigue ratio may be better with a partial range of motion than with a full. So for example, for bench presses, if you lock out all the way, that's good. But what it can do is it can really stress your triceps, which is fine. You guys like the veins on there? That's fucking sweet, right? So natural athletics, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so uh, if you lock out, it hits your triceps, but maybe you wanna train your triceps on another day maybe this is a chest focused workout. And what ends up happening is triceps, if you lock out every bench in training become the limiting factor. And then your pecs at the end of each set, are like, yeah, they're pumped a bit, they're sore, but like your triceps are really fucked up. Maybe if you stop every bench here, not here, but stop here, your pec stimulus to fatigue ratio skyrockets and that's awesome. But there has to be a good reason. It has to be one of those reasons or some other good reason. Nine times out of 10, maybe 99 out of 100. If you see someone not locking out on the bench or not squatting all the way down, there's no fucking good reason except for ego. They just want to use more yeah. weight. Then it sucks to go all the way up and down. It's annoying. It hurts more. That's not a good reason. There are good reasons to not squat deep, but you have to have one. So if someone, I like to every now and again, I, I don't actually do this because I think it's mean. But I want to, you know, when pro bodybuilders squat halfway down, I want to comment on their Instagram and be like, hey, man, I hope you recover from your injury soon. And they'd be like, what injury? Be like, well, you must be hurt. You're squatting halfway down. And, you know, there's no good answer to that. You know, what are they going to say? I don't know. They're like, I'm big. Shut up. Like, <laughs> OK, thank you. So I think that's my best answer there. Thank you. Thank and you it so was much. enough for us. So, Mike, thank you a lot for being here uh, for answer to our question. And I hope that people will start taking note about the thing that you said about all of the shit that we said. So thank you again for being here. It was such an honor. And please people again, buy the book of Mike, Renaissance Periodization. Scientific uh, Principles of Hypertrophy. And of Strength Training that we read already years cool. before. So guys, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. It was a pleasure. Your English is incredible. You don't want to hear my Italian. Uh, I know like two <laughs> words. I think we'd like to hear it. I don't even, uh, uh, arrivederci. Is that, is that, uh, is that Italian? Good. <laughs> is it, you have to do this to be Italian, right? You have meme, to meme, meme of the year, I guess. Me <laughs> I think Bernie Sanders is already the yeah, right, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Bernie Sanders is the new of the year. So second place for Mike, like in the eating challenge of the poke. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the poke, the poke uh, eating challenge. Feel, with <laughs> I feel like I'm in first place. Uh, also, in a couple yeah. of weeks, there's going to be a YouTube more uh, eating challenges, and I still uh, lose. 
so it's it's terrible. I gotta stop doing them. Dry <laughs> is, ter is terrible e uh, eating. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he he has no limits. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Well, ooh, we have another YouTube video where Jared gets defeated. Really? That's coming up soon. Not by me. <laughs> Not by me. <laughs> Special guest. So anyway. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, guys okay. thank you for having me on okay mike thank you for being last, here. last last thing can we can okay. we take a picture on the double biceps <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i can fit <laughs> wait i don't have my okay thank you thank you so much mike thank you guys take care bye bye you too bye bye